Hello. So far we have discussed about the overview of this particular course. Now before going into the idea about what is landscape, uh, let me just explain to you how you should learn this particular course the way I will take you through this entire course. We will expose you to various design issues, implementation issues, engineering details through discussions and demonstrations. You listen to the lecture very carefully, attentively. If there is any doubt, read on the slides to study the running text and graphics. In case you have any questions, put a pause, read, read it, review the video and note down the question. End of each week, you upload the questions or clarifications, whatever doubts you have in your mind in the discussion forum. Every day in that particular week, we will keep a tab on what questions and clarifications are coming from you listeners or viewers. End of each week, we will make a collection of all these questions and clarifications and make common answers to address almost all the questions. Feel free, absolutely free to seek clarifications. There may be some doubts, there may be some confusions, you can always share it, please do, we will be very happy to respond. Along with each week's lecture, you will find a very brief list of glossary of terms that we have either used in this or maybe connected with it and a brief list of reference. Those books which are highly essential or very useful for you to read. At the end of eight weeks, you will find this glossary will keep on getting appended and the reference list also probably would be appended depending on what level of references we have already referred in the earlier lectures. So end of the day, you will learn about the subject and end of the entire course, you learn about every aspect of it, you will have a set of glossary, you will have a set of reference and I will always encourage you to read through various references if you can put your hands on or buy those books or try to get the resources from your teachers or your friends. Now let us get back. What is landscape? Anything that we see, in fact, by literary terms, landscape is what I am seeing in front. Anything that we see in front is a landscape. Painters, they make painting, landscape painting, they go outdoor and draw a painting. If you make a painting sitting at your home, sitting on your couch and look at the room, that is also a landscape. So basically anything that you see is landscape which is in front of our eyes. So then what is our landscape design is all about? It refers to the reference domain, means where are we viewing from, what are we focusing at? and what is our experience. Most often, since we are referring to the landscape as more in the nature and we are, we are almost you know, coming to an agreement that we are going to deal with this landscape as a natural process of uh, design with the nature, then naturally if you are viewing it from window to outside, if you are focusing at the hill far away, if your experience is you are looking at the nature. So idea is the entire landscape is with reference to the reference domain. Stand at the same window, look inside, yes it will be a landscape because you are looking inside to the room. But the problem is you will not see nature, so you will think no I am not seeing landscape. The moment you turn 180 degree, then you will f uh, feel yes I am looking at the nature, you say it is landscape. So basically what happens is. So this may be a fixed framed view where you can see that the entire focus is at this particular point here at this point where you have landscape around, we have fence around, we have the pavement, we have the hedges on this side, we have multi-story buildings at the base, 
but when we look at it we find that this is a fixed framed view this is a landscape or it can be a panorama in the whole picture you see only nature only nature this is one such situation now the question is if you have seen both the pictures do you call this as a landscape should we call this as a landscape this question you know it comes in our mind should we call this as a landscape situation is since it is outdoor since it is natural most common answer by my all the students over the years is yes it's a landscape i asked but i can see a house over there they said still it's a landscape because in the whole frame of reference almost 98% is nature it simply indicates that if you find in your frame of reference or frame of view there are major portions which are natural then automatically we assign this as landscape okay so what is the most common understanding it is predominantly nature and natural elements in fact you search yourself you are you ask yourself that whether this is true you will have the same answer then comes the question of landscape design because we are gradually entering into the design part of it and our focus is on the landscape design but before we go into the definition of the landscape design it is very important that we first discuss a few points over what is design it is the process of creation of objects space systems or policies basically you touch on any item around you look at any item around you will find that that must have been having a shape form size color texture so this has been created so if you are designing something then it is created by you so what you created you created an object like maybe a pen a pen that you have created you might create an eraser that i have in front of me okay they are all designed there anything that you look around you will find that they are all designed but it can be a space where i'm sitting in or it can be a system that okay it's a computational system it is an audio system it's a mechanical system see the interesting part of the design is when you look at a car it is an object when you sit inside the car it is a space when you think about the entire car operating it is a system and the whole process of owning a car disowning a car and paying taxes insurance and all these are the policies so if you look at one item you will find that maybe it is an object has a space within it is running through a system and also has a policy of running it you deviate from anywhere it does not work any further so that is how it is that object or space or system or policy it has to serve some predetermined purpose or objective without purpose you don't design anything anything which has not been designed by people we always say that it is endowed by nature god has designed it we say that because we got it we had been endowed with it we did not design so we say okay maybe an almighty has designed it the point is whatever it is if anything is to be designed it must have a predetermined purpose or objective to serve that and solving one or more specified problems you may have some problems and you are trying to solve a problem for a predetermined purpose and for which you are designing an object that is what is the design if you look at the design let's say let's not talk about the landscape now let's talk about the design of various things what kind of designs furniture buildings architects will design a building urban designers will design a city path apparel design will design the apparels the dressmakers will design or fashion designers will design the dresses so there are designs for everything 
So, whenever we are designing, there are many such ways by which we design. So, everything has to solve its purpose. If you enter your kitchen, you find that there are so many crockeries, cutleries, cutters. Everything is designed for some specific purpose and that is very, very important. That means, whatever you are designing, you must have a problem to be solved and then you must have a predetermined purpose of solving that problem through ways and that is how the whole design is. Then comes the question of if you are designing, then landscape design is it a design. Quite often I have been asked or quite often I have been contested that what is landscape design? It is a horticulturist job, it is horticulture. Some people say no, it is arboriculture. Basically what happens is, you know, there are different aspects of landscape design. Let us go by definitions. Horticulture means what? The garden cultivation. But is it necessary that every time in the landscape we will be designing a garden? No, it is not. It is because of which horticulture does not mean landscape design. This horticulture term, you know, which refers to the growing fruits, vegetables, it is art of or science of growing fruits, vegetables, flowers and ornamental plants. That is horticulture. So, it is basically the horticulture is a Latin term from two terms which is originated from hortus that is garden and cultura that is cultivation. That means garden cultivation. So far what happened is all these garden cultivations were considered to be landscape. So, horticulturists they think it is their forte, their domain. I am not contesting it. What I am trying to establish is the landscape is beyond. There is another set of word that we get is arboriculture, which is also meaning the science of growing, growing and caring for ornamental plants, ornamental trees. Yes, in our landscape we do so. So, what happens is there is no contest between horticulture, arboriculture or landscape design. Basically, horticulture and arboriculture is a part of the landscape design. Then what is landscape design? I would put it very discreetly here line by line. When I will assimilate the entire thing, it should turn out to be the definition of it. First, it is an appropriate art or act of arrangement or modification or creation of objects or space. That means, if you have a space where elements are there, you are rearranging it or you are modifying it. An example is that you have, let me give an idea. You have a piece of land, you make a mound. What you have done? Here you have created and of course, you have modified or you dig out from here and take this particular earth and make the mound. So, what you have done? You have changed it by which what you have created is an area where you have a mound and you have a water body. The point is whenever you are trying to see with respect to such modifications, it is an art or act. In this act means action and art means art of doing it, the technique of doing it. It is not artistic. I do not refer it is artistic. It is not drawing or painting. It is the art of doing it means the technique of doing it and act means the action. So, it is act or art of arranging, modifying, creating objects or space located predominantly outdoor or semi outdoor. The moment you design something by changing or creating or modifying and that is predominantly outdoor then it becomes a landscape project, landscape site. Why I am saying predominantly outdoor? Because quite often we have seen landscape almost gets integrated with the architecture. It flows from interior to exterior. It flows from indoor to outdoor. There are some in between spaces which we call as semi outdoor like porticos, porches, patios, such areas. So, naturally I will not treat this as a completely outdoor. So, it is outdoor or semi outdoor. So, the moment you see that you are planning for certain area which is located predominantly outdoor, then it is landscape design. 
for a predetermined purpose or objective as I have said for design which is true for any design. Yes, there is a predetermined purpose and objective with predominantly natural materials that is important. The point is that if you are now see if you are energing, designing, modifying, creating an outdoor space with a purpose predetermined purpose whatever it is with predominantly natural materials then naturally this is becoming a landscape design. So, it is getting almost defined this cannot be treated any anymore as any other design, but you are handling with open spaces you are handling with nature you are handling with materials. To enhance the quality of environment of the delineated space see this is important why you are planning what is your predetermined purpose whatever is your purpose of use of that particular area you will find that you are basically trying overall enhancement of the quality of that environment of that particular space. If suppose you are planning a garden a park just beyond this we have many other areas which are non conducive that means it is not good for that particular park, but you are designing that particular park what you are doing is you are enhancing the quality of that particular park. Of course, you are limited that you cannot do anything beyond, but when you really plan for a little regional area or slightly broader domain when you are doing the landscaping or the urban design domain of course, these things also come in and you have to consider. So, however, basically the area that you have delineated you are trying to enhance the environmental quality of that. Which is that particular space that space which the user perceives you remember I have said if there is no user landscape is meaningless the whole world whole earth surface is natural. So, whole worlds or earth surface is landscape it does not make any sense to anybody unless somebody goes there and sees it and then enjoys it. So, basically it has to be perceived what is perceive perceiving I will discuss later when I will discuss about the behavioral issues, but one has to perceive that means in this landscape there has to be a user otherwise landscape is meaningless. An example let me give you with respect to architecture you have a bedroom nobody sleeps in that particular room there is a bed which has never been touched no point calling that as a bedroom of course designing and saying that it has a bed so naturally it is a bedroom, but if nobody sleeps in that particular room it is no longer a bedroom. The point is there has to be a user because the purpose that you are satisfying is for users and the most essential thing is the user is perceiving that particular space and deriving psychological and physical pleasure out of it. That means my landscape design is that design I am now threading all together if I read it together it is an appropriate art or act of arrangement or modification or creation of objects or space located predominantly outdoor or semi outdoor for a predetermined purpose or objective with predominantly natural materials to enhance the quality of environment of the delineated space which the user perceives and derives physical psychological and physical pleasure that means it has to be positive the landscape that you are designing has to result into positive outcome to the user perception. If it is not then even a jungle can never be a good landscape. So, basic idea is it is a very serious issue minded user is entering into a park getting dejected rejects the park comes out and says no I do not like this particular park. If that is true however best you have tried however best you have tried with every aspect it is no longer a good landscape design. So, essentially you have to understand that if you are dealing with outdoor or semi outdoor spaces to enhance the quality of that and you are taking your actions of designing with predominantly natural materials user is perceiving and they are going back with psychologically and physi physically uh, pleasure then that is a design. Quite often there are I would say contest because I am also an architect I find that the people say that okay, no no landscape can also be indoor landscape can be 
a part of architecture. Architecture can be a part of landscape. Let us not go into that debate. Let us not. Let us try to see can we draw not a very sharp one a comparison between these two. You will find that it, it makes sense. Quite often landscape and architecture will be integrated placed side by side. It is like you get up in your bedroom in the morning come out in the balcony veranda at the ground level you see the garden outside you step onto the garden. When did you shift from architectural space to landscape space? Where do you draw the line? It is very very difficult. I would say that let us not try to draw the line let us try to see can we have some bit of discrete idea about how shall I call something as architectural design spaces or landscape design spaces. Let us see this. Architectural spaces are predominantly indoor locations. They are surrounded by hard vertical surfaces, walls, hard surface as floor and hard surface as a roof or ceiling whichever level you are in. So, it is basically an indoor location which is architectural. What happens in landscape? Predominantly outdoor. Why I am using the term called predominant? Because it is not very direct that all outdoors are landscape. No, there are some semi outdoor spaces. So, I am saying if it is predominantly outdoor, it is landscape surrounded by what? Surrounded by vertical members, vertical planes, horizontal planes, which is base plane and also the overhead plane, but they are soft materials. Soft materials means if suppose we have walls replaced with a series of trees or if suppose we have walls replaced with a series of hedges that is soft material. If we have floor replaced with grass soft material and how about the ceiling? Sometime most often in the landscape we do not have ceiling most often rather very rarely we do have some overhead elements over our landscape spaces. The actually what happens is the moment you take the ceiling off it becomes very open you think about a room, you take the ceiling off, you will find the whole feeling of looking at the sky, the openness, you will find that automatically you are in semi open area. So, this is the idea. Next, architectural spaces are mostly created with artificial materials. What are the artificial materials? If you say the brick wall, brick is an artificial material, concrete steel, wood. Basically what happens is this artificial material means everything is generated from natural material, but in the converted form. So, if you are converting it to a material immediately we will call this as artificial. If you do not convert it and place it in the same manner, then it will no longer be natural. Okay? And then here in landscape created with predominantly natural materials. Why I am saying predominantly? I may have a brick wall, I may have some steel fencing, I may have the wood which has been changed, but most often majority of the materials that you will find they are all natural. Architectural spaces or architectural designs are mostly introvert in nature, means you go in surrounded by elements and interestingly our landscapes are extrovert in nature. You do not like to be surrounded you like to be in the open. So, it is extrovert in nature. Architectural spaces profiles are predominantly orthogonal is rectilinear. So, why predominantly I am saying? Because there may be some of the designs which are slightly free flowing, but predominantly they are all you know verticals orthogonal. And in the landscape it is predominantly free flowing. Of course, there can be also some orthogonal thing, but predominantly free flowing. If you see these four, I am just again summarizing it. Then, architectural space is predominantly indoor locations created with artificial materials or converted natural materials, which is introvert in na nature and predominantly orthogonal in its profile. Whereas, landscape is predominantly outdoor locations surrounded by softer materials created with predominantly natural materials and extrovert in design, and profiles are most often free flowing. So, that makes a little you know sensible differentiation between architectural space and the landscape spaces. So, when you are designing a landscape be very cautious in the process of doing 
or I would say overdoing, do not convert a landscape space to an architectural space. But there is no limit. If you make a design of an architectural space, you can always convert this to a landscape space. The moment you have gone into this part of it, of the line, then naturally it will be treated as a landscape space. The greenhouse, if you see, within that you will find that everything is okay, it is introvert, maybe the greenhouse, which has all those plants to be grown within it. But if you look into it, all the materials are mostly natural, of course, surrounded with orthogonal profiles, maybe. But yet, since it is open, you can see the sky, your eye flows out beyond the limits of the ceilings and the walls, you start feeling that you are in the midst of a nature, it almost tends to be landscape. So, there are some blurred areas like greenhouses and all, but however, the very discrete difference if I say architecture is indoor, landscape is outdoor. Architecture is artificial material, landscape is natural material, Art, uh, architecture is introvert and landscape is extrovert. Art, architecture is orthogonal, landscape is free flowing. This is how it is. Then we will be discussing about the categories of landscape. The categories of landscape, you know, basically what happens is that whenever you are trying to see a landscape can be differentiate the landscapes. Let us see this category. Very broadly, this can be divided into three categories, first category, second category and the third category. What is the first category? First category is the kind of landscape which is directly derived from the nature or natural habitat of the region. What is the second category? such natural habitat, if it has been intervened by human being for some personal use, being oblivious to the change that one is making, that is also a kind of landscape to us. When you look at the landscape, it is a second category where human intervention had been there. And then there is a third category in which there is a deliberate attempt of creating a landscape. Means you design a park, you design a garden. And here, you do not care what it was originally, now you are changing the whole thing with a deliberate attempt of changing. Let us look at the first category. What you have said is landscapes derived more or less directly from the natural habitat of the region. In the purest form, these exist only where man is absent or there has been least human intervention. So, whenever you go to a hilly area, whenever you go to a seashore, whenever you enter into a forest, they are all first category. If there is a, I would say that nothing can be absolutely pure if you are visiting that area, because if you are visiting means there is a road, there is a path. If you are visiting for your safety, there may be a small structure or shelter. So, that could be such situation, but the actual first category is what has not been e explored or exploited. The example is forest, desert, sea coast, open meadow. Let us look at this picture. Who has created this? Nobody. No human being has created this. This has been endowed by nature. The entire thing is available to us, people rush towards this area, take trouble of traveling miles and miles, spend a lot of money and go there and enjoy. They would like to stay there and enjoy that landscape. In fact, such items always attract people where people are ready to pay the price for it. But the result is, reward is they will come back happy because they have seen a nature. Look at this, another kind of nature raw nature, no interventions. There are plantations which have grown automatically. There are change in color with the clouds and sun, raw nature. And how about this? This is also raw nature. There may be a little bit of intervention somewhere, but this lake is not created. This lake is 
generated naturally only may be slightly trimmed or maintained. And this one, this is a raw nature. I am sure that if you really look into your past or ask your friends, you might have been to all these places or many of these places or similar spaces, places which you wanted to see as a raw nature. You turn around, you might find that there is a little bit of some other human intervention. The point is that if it is a raw nature, it is a first category. Look at this one. This is raw. There had been erosion. This is subjected to erosion. The top is green cover. This is raw nature. I will give an indication here. Look at this picture. Can you identify something which is different from the earlier one? You will see, yes, there is a small human intervention. There is a small hut over there. I would still consider this as a first category because such a human intervention is so negligible, so marginal, it does not make much of a difference. So, this does not go into the second category though by definition this could have gone to the second category. When it will go to the second category? When the interventions are quite significant. I will give an example. I am drawing a picture which you had been drawing since your childhood days. Follow this. Very standard picture, all of you can identify. The sun, the hills, the meadows, and the river. Imagine if in the same thing, everything is same, the river is still there and somebody makes a small hut. Is he really bothered about the whole scenario? No. What you are seeing is we are seeing the whole picture. The first picture is the first category. The second picture when somebody is making, here the idea is different. Look at this. What has happened in the second category? There had been man's intervention. Somebody has made a hut for his own use. The point is, he is not concerned what change he has made to the whole scenario which I am seeing as a first category. So, he is not seeing it. He is bothered about his own self, he is bothered about his own benefit and ultimately he is making the scenario to us. So, when we see this, we consider this as a second category. Example would be farmlands replacing the original landscapes with very differently viewed fields and other things. The entire farmland is a wonderful attractive landscape for us. We go there, can you see that there are you know people who had been there to see this, that means people are enjoyed by this, people are attracted to this. There are other buildings, but the thing is overall landscape is a second category of landscape. This is another category in which what change has, has been made? I do not see any structure over there in general, but the thing is I can see that there are farmlands. So, people have created a farmland over there not really thinking that what landscape he has created. He has only created the entire landscape together that has become a second category to us. Okay, then we will go to the third category.